Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to start off with our seventh weekly video as we're going to start off with direct and indirect characterization and we're going to talk at the end about the summative basically assessment criteria that we're going to focus on that is basically criterion B, C, and then D. And we're going to elicit clearly what does each one of them indicate at some point and how do we uh, achieve our best in the summative term. And now we're going to talk about the first part that we have in our uh, week, which is direct and indirect characterization. So uh, it, there are two different techniques, actually, that the writer can use in order to reveal the characters, traits, personality, and even motivation in any story. So the direct characterization, actually, is kind of a method that involves explicitly stating the character's trait, qualities, or even motivation. So here we have the author directly uh, telling the, the reader himself about the character. So for example, um, John was a kind and genius person. So it's a direct uh, characterization because I know what the writer is talking about. However, whenever we talk about the indirect characterization, it's in contrast, the indirect uh, reveals character traits through actions, speech, thoughts, feelings, and interactions with other characters instead of explicitly stating the character, the characteristics of any basically character. So the author here gives you clues and allows readers to draw conclusions about the character's nature. So um, maybe it can show that John, for example, uh, is giving his lunch to a homeless person. So you'll know immediately that he's kind and he's very generous. And let's move on to the second part of a presentation that is actually the personal and process pronouns. So we're going to identify and convey a specific message theme or lesson through the pronouns and we're going to build a connection between the storyteller and the audience at the same time. So if we want to basically highlight the difference between personal and positive pronouns, we'll start off with personal as uh, pronouns that are used to replace specific nouns that refer actually to people or things. They are used to indicate who or what is performing an action or being talked about. So a personal pronoun is any kind of pronouns like I, you, he, she, it. And there are a lot of examples. So, for example, she's going to the store. So, she is going to the store. She here is or performs as a personal, basically, pronoun. However, whenever we talk about the passive pronouns, we're talking about belongings, we're talking about ownership, um, that basically to someone or something else. And they are uh, very common, like yours, his, hers, its, and ours. Uh, so, this is my book. It's your car. Um. So in order to summarize basically the lesson that we're talking about, we'll say that personal pronouns are used to replace nouns when referring to people things, while positive pronouns actually indicate ownership uh, of something. And it's very important to understand actually the difference between, uh, you know, both of pronouns because it's going to be very essential to clear, um, you know, for clear and effective communication in language itself. And as part of the extra in practice, we're going to be basically copying a paragraph below, replacing the underlined words with appropriate personal and positive pronouns. And at the same time, we're going to end up with a question saying, why are personal pronouns like I and you considered essential for effective communication? Moving on to the other part that we have in our week, which is adjectives and adverbs. So we're going to identify the differences and we're going to provide details and descriptions to nouns, enhancing the precision of and uh, vividness of language. And at the same time, we're going to write a paragraph using adjectives and adverbs in regard to the text that we have, which is bad boy. Um, now, at the end, um, whenever we talk about adjectives and, and adverbs, we're going to answer a challenging question that is, what is the primary role of adverbs in language and how do they modify verbs, adjectives, and other um, adverbs? So, whenever we talk about adjectives, we're talking about uh, basically describing nouns. However, whenever we talk about adverbs, we're talking about description of actions, of movement itself, too. And lastly, we're going to identify the major elements of writing a personal and elements again as a revision part and the required criterion uh, through the Peel model of writing uh, in a basically paragraph. So we're going to be basically modeling a paragraph using color coding and students are going to be using to the Peel model as um, you know a writer tool kit allowing the creation of well-structured, coherent, and persuasive paragraphs. We're going to move on to the assessment criteria itself. We're going to talk about criteria B, C, and D, and we're going to focus on the presentation and communication at the same time, along with thinking skills, knowledge, and understanding. And we're going to end up our uh, basically 
assessment, the major assessment, which is uh, the summative assessment, uh, through basically um, changing questions that are how can we construct coherent and well reasoned arguments and count arguments in personal narratives? And we're going to go through the interactive blocks to jot down three questions regarding the assigned summative basically criteria. And that's it for our video. See you next time.